What does the word hub mean to you? We think of hub as the center of activity, the place where all the action is happening. But hub is originally a word used in mechanics. It's a place where all the spokes meet in a wheel, making it incredibly important for how a bike functions. Hubs are important for coordination in any area of life, and in a certain way, this is the key revelation behind the project that I'm going to be talking about today, Cosmos. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education. Here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that anyone can easily understand them. In this video, we're going to be explaining what Cosmos is, how it works, and what they're trying to achieve. Long story short, Cosmos is an open source blockchain project that aims to connect other blockchains to each other in order to establish an easily usable, fast, scalable, interoperable, and low fee hub for basically any use of a blockchain. This is still a little vague, but there's really one idea that Cosmos is all about, interoperability. Why is it so important? Well, in the same way that many of the amazing applications of computers did not become widespread until they could all communicate with each other over the internet and eventually the World Wide Web, Cosmos sees themselves as the path to an internet of blockchains. Now, if this sounds similar to projects like Polkadot or Harmony One, you're not going crazy. There are many similarities, especially between Cosmos and Polkadot, which I'm going to be covering later. But the difference between the internet of blockchains and the internet is that most of the communication on the internet is actually happening between a few centralized servers and a lot of clients. And a client is just a user's computer. For example, millions of people use Twitter every day. But all of those unique users are all interacting with one centralized point for their data. The Cosmos Internet of Blockchains would allow different blockchains to communicate with each other in a decentralized way. A way where one person or one single organization is not able to completely control. So how is Cosmos planning on actually making this dream a reality? This is where the Cosmos hub and zone model come in. Hubs are often very important for systems to really take off with a high number of users, and Cosmos is no different. In Cosmos, they took a look at the cryptocurrency landscape and saw a lot of spokes, but no hub. In other words, they saw a large number of blockchains with interesting use cases, but the methods of communicating between these chains still left a lot to be desired. In fact, one of the largest vulnerabilities out there are blockchain bridges, which is a tool used to move money from one chain to another. Cosmos created what they call a hub and zones model. They have a central hub that facilitates the transfer of tokens across various chains. The founder of the Tendermint protocol, which later became Cosmos, Jay Kwan, explained the problem on Anthony Pompliano's The Pomp podcast like this. If you want to use blockchain A, but you have tokens from blockchain B, it is difficult to go across the two chains using the tokens you already have. Now, atomic swaps attempt to solve this, but are limited because they have to use specific hash algorithms, and they have to be capable of handling smart contracts, meaning simple, and usually more secure, blockchains like Bitcoin do not play well with atomic swaps. There are also wallet compatibility issues, so there was certainly a gap to improve this process. The Cosmos Hub improves this by letting any chain that has a zone use any other chain that has a zone without worrying about atomic swaps or other more difficult transfer methods. The Hub does this by making use of the IBC, or Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol. Now, Let's get into the inter-blockchain communication protocol. The IBC allows for seamless transfer of tokens between all the different zones attached to the Cosmos hub using something called two-way pegging. This idea actually comes from an older idea in Bitcoin called sidechains which could be used to scale the network. You can actually check out our specific video on the Lightning Network for a review of a Bitcoin sidechain that's actually being used. Cosmos uses this very same idea to basically create representations of coins on other chains without compromising the security of the main chain. In an interview with Cointelegraph in November of 2021, the CEO of Tendermint said, We are seeing 22 blockchains that support IBC. They have all been able to connect to various decentralized exchanges available in the Cosmos ecosystem system, such as Osmosis and Gravity Dex. So there's been a lot of cross-chain activity, much more than anyone expected, and we are seeing a very positive growth cycle with IBC enabled. Now let's talk about something else. In the crypto world, people often think not just about the specific business or project that they're building, but they are also thinking about the future of technology, money, and governance. Because of this, people often have very strong opinions about how things should be run, which makes them very hesitant to partner with other projects that may infringe upon their vision. Cosmos avoids this by simply allowing 
allowing other independent chains to set up zones and connect to the hub. These other chains maintain their sovereignty and their governance structure, which is something we'll bring up later when discussing the differences between Polkadot and Cosmos. But there is a distinct difference of vision between lots of people in crypto, and one of these main differences is between mechanisms of consensus, or basically how the project can agree on future changes. Now the original idea for Cosmos actually converges with a project called Tendermint, which differs from Bitcoin's proof of work consensus mechanism. Let's talk about Tendermint. Tendermint is the name of the original project created by Jay Kwan. Ethan Buckman, and Zarko Milosevic. As with Cosmos's overall goal, the main problem solved by Tendermint is smooth interoperability between blockchains. Now they achieved this in the Tendermint protocol with a few different interesting features. Cosmos itself is a proof of stake blockchain, which means those who validate the blockchain have to prove that they have something at stake so that way they won't attack the network. You know, the usual lock your coins up if you want to contribute to the network, and if you're found guilty of making fraudulent transactions, we'll take those coins. At least this is the model that other chains have started using as well. Tendermint is also designed to be Byzantine fault tolerant, which is just a complicated way of saying that the network can work perfectly fine even if there are a fraction of bad actors. As long as less than 33% of the validating power, not just the total number of validators, but the total voting power, is not Byzantine or acting unreliably, then the network is still secure. Now, it should be noted that this is a tad smaller than Bitcoin's 51%, so it's something to keep in mind. Technically, they do this by using a two-phase voting algorithm. Once two-thirds of validating power confirms a block, it is then added to the chain. This is partly what makes Cosmos so fast, secure, and can ensure interoperability. On the other hand, on a proof-of-work blockchain, users have to wait longer for the block to be confirmed, which makes it harder and slower to use, especially across devices like smartphones. This does come with a trade-off though, as proof-of-stake chains are much easier to centralize. In Cosmos, at least right now, the top five individual validators have over 25% of the voting power, and the top 10 validators have over 43% of the voting power. So Cosmos clearly has some interesting ideas, along with some potential issues. But how does this compare to projects like Polkadot, who aim to do something similar? The main way that Polkadot and Cosmos are similar is their end goal, interoperability between blockchains which is definitely a massive opportunity for whoever can get it right. The structural difference in how they support new blockchains is Polkadot's Layer 0 and Cosmos's SDK or Software Developer Kit. These are each new ways of creating blockchains. But have different approaches to governance. For example, Cosmos lets creators take more control of their chain and create it how they want to. The tool is literally called a software development kit, where anyone can use their suite of tools to add to the Cosmos IBC. In fact, any project can be a part of the Cosmos IBC protocol and they can retain sovereignty over their own chain. On the other hand, Polkadot requires more of a buy-in to their governance structure. Polkadot serves as layer zero and lets you build a layer one parachain on top of the main relay chain. As you may have saw in our explanation of Polkadot, a huge feature of using their network is that they provide security features built into any blockchain that's created on the Polkadot network. Cosmos has a more hands-off approach, allowing the creators of those chains to customize their chain how they would like, and simply provide the necessary tools to connect it to the Cosmos hub and use the IBC to become part of the network. In short, Polkadot focuses on security, and Cosmos emphasizes independence and connectivity. Now, I will say there's a note here on the Cosmos's tokenomics. If you're buying it, you better be staking it as well, because it is currently inflationary. And the current inflation rate, also known as the staking reward rate, is around 17%. I'll also say the initial tokenomics don't look too bad. Around 5% was for a seed sale, around 7% for a strategic sale, around 10% for the foundation, another 10% for the Tendermint company, and the rest was raised through a public fundraiser, basically meaning a token sale that raised around $16 million in April of 2017. I'll also say that Cosmos recently released a new white paper sporting something called Atom 2.0 that is supposed to address inflation as well, but it would take another video to explain that. So the problem of interoperability is one to be taken very seriously and may end up being the main feature that brings the rest of the wild west of crypto into a cohesive ecosystem that all works well together. Cosmos definitely provides some unique insights and improvements that may be part of the eventual solution to our interoperability problem. But Cosmos does have problems of its own, like stake centralization for example. However, they are part of a growing group of innovators who are moving in an optimistic direction. 
As I end this video, I want to remind you that my DeFi for Beginners guide is still completely free and you can access it at whiteboardcrypto.com simply by entering your email and joining my list, where I also share behind the scene projects that I'm working on, weekly important crypto news, and every now and then I also share my thoughts on topics that people ask about. I highly recommend joining within the next month. Wink wink. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, I really hope you've learned something, and most of all, I hope to see you in our next video.